I have no idea what this thing is. I hope it's in focus. It's apparently powered by solar panels, fitted with cameras and flying 11 miles up. It's also much more than a surveillance balloon, because it feeds into a persistent narrative that a newly emboldened China is on the way up and America on the way down. This afternoon, it was spotted over North Carolina, heading towards the Atlantic Ocean, where President Biden seemed to indicate that it may be shot down. We'll take care of it, he said. Last night, his Secretary of State was strengthening one key Asian alliance and then cancelling what would have been his first meeting with China's leader this weekend. China's decision to fly a surveillance balloon over the continental United States is both unacceptable and irresponsible. That's what this is about. Um, it's a violation of our sovereignty. It's a violation of international law. We got this weird thing above us. This thing is weird. China's alibi is that this is a weather balloon blown way off course. Though it was filmed here in Montana, one of just three states which house intercontinental ballistic missiles. And every hour Biden's administration watches this Cold War spy drama, the weaker it sounds to its Republican critics and rivals. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, cognizant of the potential impact to civilians on the ground uh, from a debris field, uh, right now, we're going to continue to monitor and review options. Last summer, China launched ballistic missiles in war games across Taiwan. And a U.S. general this week predicted in a leaked memo that the U.S. and China would be at war over the island in two years' time. That may be wildly pessimistic, with the Chinese all too aware of Russia's quagmire in Ukraine. But Washington is preparing to counter a Chinese invasion. This was Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin in the Philippines this week, where the Americans have been given the use of up to nine military bases. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida was in Washington last month. The Japanese are buying hundreds of American cruise missiles. Mr Kishida was furious when Chinese missiles landed near Japan last year for the first time and Japan's pacifist foreign policy, born of the Second World War, is fast becoming a thing of the past. It was almost two years into Joe Biden's presidency that he met President Xi of China, and Beijing is still emerging from its COVID-induced isolation, perhaps in the nick of time, because the diplomatic storm over this surveillance balloon may only be the herald of a far bigger crisis to come. Well, with me now is Lord Ricketts, a senior British diplomat who served as the UK's national security advisor. Lord Ricketts, now that it looks like this first balloon is going to be shot down, potentially pretty soon, um, will that further exacerbate tensions, do you think, between China and America and the West? I think it's inevitable that the Americans will now want to get this thing down. I imagine they'll want to try and get it down in, in, you know, without smashing it, see what's on it, it, see what the gadgets are, what it is actually doing up there, which does look very mysterious. I think what it does is it kind of crystallizes an underlying confrontation that's been going on with China for some time. Mm. This in itself, I don't think, is all that threatening, but it's a sort of symbol that China is up to all sorts of things. Well, and what is it up to exactly? Because the second balloon has now been spotted. Does that suggest that there's more of a kind of provocation going on here than perhaps we might at first have thought? Uh, it is very bizarre because I can't think the balloon will pick up much that the satellites that go over the American here all the time can get. Um, so is it intended to spook the Americans? Well, it's had that effect in a way, but it's even more embarrassed the Chinese. They've had to backtrack, apologize. Anthony Blinken's visit to Beijing has been canceled. Can't believe the Chinese leadership wanted that. So is this some part of the intelligence system that has done something in an uncoordinated way? We don't know. Mm. And was Blinken right to cancel that visit? Because there was a hope that it would try to sort of smooth over some of the tensions that had been emerging in recent months. It was going to be quite a big thing. And there was talk of him seeing President Xi, which would be, you know, pretty unprecedented. Um, and so I think he would have looked weak if he'd just gone ahead. And the Republicans were already criticising uh, the president. Um, I hope it's only postponed um, until this crisis is blown over, uh, because it is important that the Americans and the Chinese are talking. It's one more reason why the timing of this bizarre incident is so strange. And, and what happens now? Because if this thing is shot down, as looks inevitable, 
Might there be some kind of retaliation from the Chinese? And how big a threat is China to the West? I doubt retaliation. I mean, the Chinese have put themselves in a very weak position now. They've flown this great big thing over America. Uh, if it comes to Earth, then we're going to find out what they're doing with it. I think they are in the wrong, and they know that. And the, for the Chinese, they've been quite apologetic in their reaction. Mm. So this is a reminder. We all have to be very vigilant, all the Western countries, citizens as well as governments, that the Chinese are actively trying to steal secrets, um, subvert, influence, persuade Western political systems in their interest. You know, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing every day. I'll come back to the UK response in just a second, but a US general predicted last month that the US could be at war with China in two years. Is that overly alarmist or is that a real genuine threat? I think it's alarmist. I mean, generals are paid to plan for everything, including wars. And of course, the American military will have plans. I suppose he's referring to Taiwan. I mean, the flashpoint would be some kind of uh, Chinese action against Taiwan, whether a war or economic blockade or something. And the president has already said that, you know, if there is a Chinese um, as, uh, attack on Taiwan, then America will defend Taiwan. So that's the flashpoint. I don't personally think they're going to be at war in two years, but the confrontation is growing. Right. So what about the UK response then? Because Rishi Sunak has slightly tempered, um, you know, our attitude to a Chinese threat, but it's still some of his party would like him to be more robust. Would, is, would that be the right thing? Well, uh, the intelligence heads have been telling us for some time that China is the long-term threat. Um, one of them said rather well uh, recently, Russia is the weather, but China is the climate. It's the long-term confrontation. On the other hand, we need to be vigilant, but we also need to be talking to them mm -hmm. about issues like climate change, public health, and so on. And we do need to work with them commercially. Because so particularly post-Brexit. We must be very, very uh, vigilant uh, on anything to do with security. Post-Brexit, we need the biggest market in the world for British firms to work with.